Hello everyone, my name is Gustavo, and today I'm here representing Genoa. Uh, I'm going to talk about a simulation model for network configuration and railway operations in the Rumo Southern network in Brazil. This presentation is a result of a project that we developed with Rumo, with, which, has, uh, which is a logistic and railway company. So I'm going to start uh, talking about us. Genoa is a decision make support consultants with the expertise to streamline and refine business process and provide dependable and true to life outcomes. We develop customized solutions to solve the problems of our clients, starting from a thorough understanding of the, uh, the system's operation. Uh, analytics, big data, simulation, and optimization are some of the tools we employ for uh, our solutions, and we are partners with Analogic Latam. So this is the agenda for my presentation, and I'm going to start with the problem and some of the description. Uh, the study system covers the southern net railway network concessional to Rumo. Here in the picture is the line with the darker blue. Uh, in 2021, the southern railway network transported 12.3 billion TQIs over 7,222 kilometers, serving 150 terminals and three Brazilian ports. Uh, the railway network features uh, the operation of third-party trains, as well as service trains and freight trains, and about 80% of the goods transported are related to Brazilian agribusiness products. So, the goal was to evaluate Rumo's quarterly planning, consider the project demand uh, across different terminals, as well as the available infrastructure, and we have two points of attention. The first one was the network. Uh, each section of the network has a specific track characteristics that limit train sizes, maximum loads, and require minimum number of locomotives. Uh, the age and unique railway network requires detailed analysis to optimize transportation. And the second point of attention was the materials. The strong seasonality in the agriculture sector directly impacts the volumes and the types of the transported products. So, transporting various types of agricultural products during specific times of the year presents a logistical challenge. Uh, the system encompasses the entire process, including the movement of empty and loaded trains, the tailored representation of the railway network, and uh, load and unload at the terminals. So, the idea is the trains depart load from terminals bound for parts of the terminals, carrying combination of various materials batches uh, in, accord in accordance with the gross tonnage and maximum speed for each track segment and the maximum composition length. Upon being loaded at their destination, the trains uh, follow the reverse paths, load or not, traversing the same railway system uh, for, um, for the outbound journey. So uh, for the, our model, we, develop, uh, we divided the, the system in three frontiers, the first one is the railway frontier. So we have the departure from, from trains at the load points. They will move from the track. In the track, we have entry points for service trains and for third-party trains and trains from secondary batches. And then we have the exit points until the trains arrive at their destination. And then we have the departure for empty trains that we remove from the same railway system until they arrive at the loading points. The second frontier is the terminal agent frontier. Uh, uh, they begin with the arrival of the train. Then we have the entry maneuver and then the dismemberment of the train. And here uh, it's divided into two different op uh, operations. The first one is the locomotive that go to supply, then maintenance, and then the formation of new compositions. And then we have the operation of the wagons. If it was empty train, the wagons go to loading. And if it was unloaded train, the wagons go to unloading and the cleaning. And then the formation of new compositions, the exit maneuver, and then the departure of the train. And at least we have the port agent that englobes the same operations of the terminal, Plus, we have the storage of the cargo, 
arrive at the, the ships, the upload, and then the departure of the ships. So the objects of our study was evaluate the railway network capacity uh, segment by segment as a whole and at terminals and ports facing different uh, demand scenarios. Estimate the explicit utilization of each track segment and uh, allow verify the impact of the most congested segments in the system. Uh, assess expansion projects, and not only in terms of handling cargo, but also regarding their dynamic aspects, such as load and load times, yard areas, uh, retention time, and in addition for the need of rolling stock, and support investment for new wagons and new locomotives. And visualize, visualize and understand the operation effects of decisions through a graphical interface. So here is some assumptions that we made for our story. Uh, all lines were, teacher, uh, were treated as a set of block session in each block session as a resource. For those who are not familiar, a block session is a segment of the track that has control systems to ensure that only one train occupies this block session at a time. Uh, we consider the universal crosser, but in a simpler way, uh, it's just to allow the exchange of a train to one line to another. Uh, we have the overtaking of trains, but it only occurs uh, according to the priority rules. It's defined by the type of the train. In the dynamics of the railway circulation, trains can move in two directions and try and try allowed that the trains in opposite direction cross, uh, we have the crossing arts. All the control of the railway roads uh, in the model is carried out through the allocation and the allocation of the block sessions. And to ensure that a block session don't, is occupied by two trains or collapse the rail circulation, the process is carried out in a systematic way. Uh, so to be more clear here, I have a short video. And the idea is each rectangle, each rectangle is a block session. And when we have two rectangles in parallel, that means it's a crossing art. So each train occupies just one block session. But when he will allocate, he allocates all block sessions up to the next crossing art. So that if has a train coming the opposite direction, they can move, uh, they can do uh, the crossing without collapsing the, the railway network. So that's what happened in the first line. One train waits until the other deallocates, and then he continues the movement. OK. So why any logic? Here I could could sit uh, a lot of things, but in basics, uh, software package dedicated to uh, based modeling, so we can specify uh, the characteristics of our agents, of the tracks, of the, the train types. Discrete event simulation framework, is integration with external libraries, which facilitates to us input a lot of data in the uh, begin the simulation, and is already integrated. So uh, our approach, uh, I'll, I will talk about our uh, two challenges that we faced. The first one, like I said, was the railway network uh, features complex characteristics due to its age and extensive coverage. So the model must check the train types for each segment before the train enters in that section. And the second challenge are the selection of terminals in order to balance the demand of materials. So the model calculates a service gap to identify the terminals that are landing behind in terms of demand. And I'm going to talk about a little more of these two challenges. The first one is the train type. So along the railway network, the different type of train formations are required uh, on each corridor with packing track conditions. This way, uh, in a origin point, or we can call a load terminal, uh, the train attaches the car and moves to the next connection point. And in this connection point, the train type for the next segment is checked so that the train departs with the maximum possible length and gross, to uh, gross tonnage capacity while respecting the minimal blocking. 
So if there's a need to attach or detach cars at this connection point, uh, the train is finished and new trains are formed uh, respecting the train condition, the train type configuration for the next segment. And about the service gap, uh, the selection process of load and unload terminals uh, are carried out to consider the lag between the expected volume in the terminals and the volume load or unload in them. We call gap or simply gap, or golf service gap or simply gap, and the gap is associated with root to root uh, in the origin destination matrix that, that is fulfilled by the user in the beginning of the simulation. So here we, uh, is how we calculate the gap, and this is how it works. Uh, when an empty train arrives at a load terminal, the, this terminal is the origin point, and then the algorithm will search for the possible destination, and the, the algorithm will select the terminal that's the most uh, outdated in relation to the gap, in order to balance the call of the discharge terminals. And when the load train arrives at unload point, the algorithm will search for the search terminal that's the most lagging behind in terms of empty wagons, in order to ensure that it's always a constant flow of empty wagons to the loading terminals. So about the results, we actually not allowed to show a lot of data and numbers. Uh, so the results are represented more li like what the model is capable of and what information we can extract. So here we have uh, the GIS map, so we can see the movement of, of the trains. The filled circle is the, the load train, and the not filled circle is the empty train, and we can see the, the movement uh, from terminals. Here we can see the operation center of commander. Here is way more faster than the other video that I showed, but we can see trains moving in two directions and the process of allocation and the allocation of block sessions. And we can see the crossing of trains too. Here we have a dashboard with uh, data and graphics that you can take off the model simulation. And, and the data can be trains in motion, load and unload the trains per day, quantity of materials, locomotives, uh, current pace and expect pace, accumulate locomotives and actual demand, fulfilled demand and available demand. Uh, and we can see data about the terminals too, like receive demand, actual, uh, current inventory, and dispatch demand. And you can see it's divided by the type of the material. So we, here we have corn, uh, soya, and sugar. And we have the utilization of each track of the terminals too. And in conclusion, we develop a simulation model to be used by Humo in the Southern Railway Network. The network infrastructure can be fully customized through an interface, allowing the user to design their desired network layout. The model heuristically decides on routes, prioritizes loads, and selects appropriate train types to meet the expected demand with the available resources. Furthermore, the simulation model includes characteristics of the track, Visualize, visualize and understand the operations effects of decision through a graphical interface. Cargo tr transshipment terminals and volumes from benches connect to the network. Humus load and unload the terminals. And external events that can affect the running capacity of the trains. And the model is helping Humus to assess capacity on quality basis uh, of the railway network in different scenarios. As well, as well as analyze road stock utilization and identify structural botanists within their network. Thank you. A great <laughs> presentation and a great model. Um, so having built something similar myself previously with all of these, we call them the passing loops or the crossovers, 
um, and I'm sure you did, but did you consider like all the unplanned events like uh, track breakdowns and train breakdowns? Because these are usually things that make it really complex. Um, how complex was the like rail engine that did this like booking of the blocks, et cetera, and like what sort of just the, for everybody to appreciate the, the complexity and it is in building such a thing? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. No, I just want to, if you can comment or elaborate more on the complexities of building that whole booking system of the rail engine of having the trains move between the crossovers. Oh, okay. Uh, so you have a, a Java class and the, a lot of functions that we, we have to produce that uh, for the process of allocation and the allocation of the, the trains. And you also have the, the failures, the the schedule stops, the current stops, corrects the stops, so it was a very complex model, and uh, it's just me here today, but the, with the, our team of specialists was, is a lot of bigger. So, thank you guys.